Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Lee aka Rolling Thunder and in today's video we're going to be talking about are older bikes better or worse than newer bikes. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea and without further ado let us get in to the video. ladies and gents welcome back to another video i hope you're doing well and as the title of the video suggests we are talking about are older bikes better or worse than newer bikes first of all i suppose we should really analyze the question are older bikes better or worse and in my honest opinion i don't think older bikes are any better or any worse than newer bikes okay fine the newer bikes have better technology and sometimes not all the time but sometimes have better components than older bikes but then again, it's to be expected, obviously, as technology progresses and gets better and better over the years, there are going to be leaps in technology that uh, older bikes just can't keep up with. Now, as a basis, I'm using my 2013 Yamaha R1 for this video. My R1 doesn't have the really, really disgustingly good styling. But, and I'm using this term loosely, but what my R1 has over the new shape R1s is it has character and it has character in bucket loads okay fine the newer bikes yes you can ride them a lot harder and a lot faster in general surroundings and general situations like street riding and whatnot but i think personally that the newer bikes these days okay fine they've got so many safety nets so many electronic aids and so many different rider settings and modes that sometimes help but also sometimes hinder a person's riding ability and sometimes even hinders the experience of riding said motorcycle. Now, believe me, I wish I could say that I've ridden the 2022 or the 2021 R1, but I'm afraid I haven't. The closest I've got to it is sitting on one. But even sitting on one, you can tell that the quality is different. The seat padding on this R1, this old girl, the 2013 R1, is by far and away more comfortable than that of a 2021 or a 19 or even a 16 R1. Now, like I said, don't get me wrong, the styling of the new R1s is amazing. I love it. I love the whole Iron Man sort of looking thing from the 2016 to 2019 R1s. The 2020, 21 and 22 R1s, I'm not 100% sure on. I got a nod from a Ducati rider, woo! Even though secretly I am a Ducati rider at heart. The point I'm trying to make is, is that okay fine there's more than enough technology on the market these days to make the older bikes better like for example a quick shifter like a retrofitted auto blipper like a power commander or a rapid bike fuel unit and you know all the other random stuff that you can get for these for these bikes these days but at their core i still think wholeheartedly that the older bikes are a little bit more fun to ride now please tell me if i'm wrong but who doesn't get a thrill out of this? Who doesn't get a thrill out of doing that on their bike? Okay, fine, I don't have all the electronic aids and the Olin suspension and fuck knows what else that the newer R1s have, but could you do that on a newer R1 without having some sort of electronic restriction? Like I said in the previous video, I actually know someone who's got a 2009 R1 and a 2016 R1M and between the two bikes they're night and day but with the generation gap between them without actually riding them back to back I wouldn't like to say which one's better or which one's worse but what I can say from a you know an opinion standpoint shall we say I do like the shape of the new well the newer R1s should I say but they're just too expensive the 09 to 2014 R1s they're just so much easier to get hold of and so much cheaper to own so if you want to look at it from a financial standpoint the older bikes are better they're cheaper to buy they're cheaper to own they're cheaper to run cheaper to insure you know they're just a little bit financially easier to live with i mean obviously if you've got the money to get a new shape r1 or a new or anything that's new from like 2019 onwards then fine you know knock yourselves out but from a personal standpoint and my own personal opinion i don't think the newer bikes are as good character wise as the old ones and i mean i've had 1996 reg bikes i've had 98 reg bikes i think this 
R1 is probably the newest in terms of registration that I've ever owned. I've had two Ducati 748s that were from the late 90s. I've had two 848s that were from the early 2000s. I've got an early 2000s 1098S, as you guys already know. And I've got the 2013 R1. So in terms of, you know, age range, I've had all sorts. I've had bikes that have been eight years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. But the one thing they've all had in common, none of them, and I mean this, honestly, none of them have had any electronics. No, sorry, I lie. One of my 848s did have a quick shifter and traction control. So, excuse me, I am wrong. One of the seven or eight big bikes that I've owned over the years has had some kind of electronics, but it was a very, very basic quick shifter and traction control setup. Not necessarily the best thing in the world. You know, it wasn't a uh, Dynajet Power Commander quick shifter. It wasn't a uh, third party quick shifter. You know, it wasn't one of the known brand quick shifters. It was literally just a Ducati own thing. And don't get me wrong, it works really, really well. And for the time that I had the 848 Evo Corsair SE, which, it, which is what it was, you know, I couldn't fault it. The quick shifter worked every time I asked it to. Okay, fine, the quick shifter was only up and not down as well. However, that didn't matter. At the time, I was only interested in the upshifts. I was more than happy to get involved with the downshifting and, you know, bang it up and down the gearbox like it was going out of fashion because that's what you do when you're in your mid-twenties and got a super bike that you shouldn't really be owning because, you know, you just can. Which is what I did. However, I'm really detracted from the point of this video. As you can see from that little bit of, you know, prattling on that I've done, I think it's fair to say that uh, I am very much a big older bike fan like I've already said I've had bikes that have that have ranged from the early noughties the late nineties you know I've done it I've been there I think one of the most fun bikes I've ever owned other than my 748s was my Aprilia RSV 1000 Mille and okay it only had like 130 horsepower but again being a big thumping v-twin it had so much character it, you know it just it screamed Italian flair. It was like, hey, look at me, I've got a big CC engine, look at my noise, boom, boom, boom. And I don't think the newer bikes have that these days. You know, like a lot of the Japanese four-cylinder bikes, like the uh, Kawasaki ZX-10, like the uh, Suzuki GSX-R 1000, like the, dare I say it in some respects, the BMW S1000 double R. You know, Yes, they've got the technology. Yes, they've got the power. But they just don't have the, the um, they don't have the character. You know, people know when they hear a Ducati, like the older ones, the 916s, 996, 998s, the 1098s, the 1198s, and even the Panagales. People know when a Ducati's around and when a Ducati's approaching. With the, uh, the triples, like for example, the, um, the Triumph Street Triple and the Triumph uh, Daytona 765 and all those kind of bikes people know that they're approaching or they know what it is because they know the noise they they you know they associate that noise with a pedigree motorcycle these days every japanese four cylinder thousand all sounds the same to me apart from obviously the r1 do you know what i mean it's so like every cross the frame four cylinder japanese bike so suzuki kawasaki even the hondas they all sound somewhat similar and you know there's nothing you can do about it they just all all the four cylinder bikes in my opinion all sound the same there's nothing to differentiate between them yes okay the new bikes have the flashy technology and have the blingy parts and you know the carbon fiber and this and that and the other but they lack flair they lack personality in my opinion anyway okay fine you can do certain things to certain bikes to make them look and sound better. For example, my Ducati 1098 sounds okay with a standard can on it, but sounds even better with a set of Terminioni cans on it. My R1 sounds absolutely woeful with standard exhaust on it, but sounds amazing with a set of Aki's on it. There's so many things you can do to old, the older bikes to almost make them like the newer bikes. It's just whether or not you're prepared to spend the money and the time on doing it. And I'll be honest, if you love your bikes as much as I do, 
you most certainly would spend the time and the money on it. Like I've said in previous videos about the R1, I want to get a DCAT link pipe for this. I cannot justify spending around the five to six hundred pounds on the official Akropovich DCAT link pipe. I just can't do it. I cannot justify it. Whereas these days, the new bikes, when they run off the showroom floor, you can spec them out to however you want. You know, if you want a full system on it, you can buy it. You can have it put on when you buy the bike. If you want a set of carbon fairings, you can have them put on the bike before you buy it. You know, you can get all these little add-ons for the newer bikes that you couldn't get for the older ones. Don't get me wrong. Like I've already said, if you have the money, you know, by all means, knock yourselves out, do what you want. But if you're balling on a budget like I am, you've got to be careful where you spend your money. For example, this bike is due its MOT, uh, not due an MOT, this bike is due a service in 2,000 miles, which is probably going to cost me a few hundred quid. But I'll spend that money because it's on a bike I love. And that's the same with, you know, with people that have got older bikes from different generations and stuff like that. It's like the people that have got bikes from the 70s and the 80s. Okay, fine, they're not to everyone's taste and they're not everyone's cup of tea. However, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. No one can tell you what to have or what not to have. If I said to you guys now, you know, I'm going to stop riding super bikes and I'm going to get a Harley. I don't expect people to agree with it. I don't expect people to hate me for it, but it happens. And I truly think it's the same thing with new bikes versus old bikes. You know, my 1098 is what? The best part of 15 years old? Maybe slightly more, maybe slightly less. And I get people on Panagales and on V4s and stuff like that when they see me on it. I wouldn't even so much as get fucking looks at. But should I be riding around on a V4 and another V4 comes up next to me or rides past me or whatever, I'll get a nod, I'll get a wave, I'll get, you know, some sort of rev bomb of, of appreciation or something like that. And it's like, wow. You newer bike owners are fucking snobs. They're like proper snobby. I, for one, am not like that. If I see someone on a bike, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a 125, a 250, a 400, a superbike, or whatever. If they nod at, nod at me, I will quite happily nod back. But if I nod at them, and they don't nod back to me, I just think, okay, fine, cool, moody cunt. But it's the same with everything, I guess. You know, some people like the older generation things, some people like the newer generation things. I guess it depends on what generation you're from, really. I, for one, appreciate all things motorcycling okay granted i absolutely hate with a passion moped riders i hate them with a passion however i also appreciate that everyone has to start somewhere i'm not going to turn around and say to people oh no i'm not going to talk to you i'm not going to hang around with you i'm not going to nod at you in the street if you're on a 125 moped like i said you nod at me i'll nod back at you it's simple road manners, do you know what I mean? And likewise, if they nod at me first, I will nod back. If I nod at you, and you don't nod back to me, then fine, it is what it is. Again, I'm guessing it's just a generation thing, innit? But, in my humble opinion, do I think newer bikes are better than older bikes? It's six and one, half a dozen the other, I'm afraid. Certain bikes have been known to be better in the older generations. Some bikes are known to be better in the newer generations. But how you perceive what is better and what is worse is pretty much down to the individual. I'm not gonna turn around and say to you, you have to believe what I say. What I say is gospel. What I say is true. If I say the older generation is better than the newer generation, if you say different, you're wrong and you're this and you're that and you're the other. No, I'm not like that. This channel is about being open, honest, and being able to communicate my points of view to you guys and you guys to be able to communicate your points of view to me. And by all means, if you have got an opinion on whether older bikes are better than newer bikes, please feel free to put it in the comments box down below so we can have a conversation about it. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'm going to leave you. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. It'd be great to have you on board. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to smash the like button and ring the bell so you're kept up to date with all new content when it drops. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been awesome as always. I have been Lee, aka Riding Thunder, saying look after yourselves, look after each other, stay safe on the road, be aware of COVID-19, be safe, be happy, and as always, adios!